a long time ago, um, actually 10 years ago, I started posting stuff um, online to help worship leaders. And I actually started writing a book that um, I announced through social media that I had stopped writing because that just wasn't the direction that I'm going. Now, it's still not the direction that I'm going. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of those things that I had in the book and post them online and hopefully share some some of the things that I've learned that will just maybe save you some time. One big question that a lot of times we have as worship leaders is how do I introduce a new song? Because if you just throw it in on a Sunday, for instance, you'll get people looking at you like this. Does, does he know that we don't know? And really, you're only bailed out of this very awkward situation if the song is brand new and it's been playing on the radio 24-7. But if you live in a, in a place that doesn't really necessarily listen to new Christian music, you're kind of in a little bit of a pickle. Um, I mean, a little difficult to do that. So let, let's look at a few ideas that I've had. Um, about how to how to um, introduce a new song. Now, if, if you have any ideas, please post them in the comments below so that other people can look and maybe maybe build off your idea or maybe take your idea. Um, it's always it's always good to share ideas. So first off, have it played in the background when people come. So maybe you know service hasn't started yet, and uh, you have <laughs> dogs. Maybe service hasn't started yet, and um, you, you have it where um, you can play some music just softly in the background, either on a recorded track or have the instruments actually up there. I mean, musicians actually up there. And uh, just play kind of soft in the background where they just kind of get the, maybe the melody down. If you've got, for instance, a piano player that you can just play the play the, the melody line instead of singing it, play it, where they get the idea of the song in their head. And here's the thing, the good thing about this, it sets a nice little atmosphere, and also it, it kind of just gets in their subconscious so that when you actually sing the song, they're like, oh, I, I've heard this somewhere. Number two, play it during altar time. At the end of service, when people go up to pray, or um, when people are leaving or whatever, have it played. Um, and, and it'll, once again, get in people's subconscious, but then they, they'll also kind of associate it with, you know, with, hearing from God and, and from worshiping, and they'll kind of just associate it with that, with that. So that when you actually do the song, it'll help them to say, hey, this isn't a new song, this is a worship song. Um, half of the battle is getting them to see it as a song that they sing. Because when you first introduce the song, they're going to see it as, as an intruder. This isn't the song that we sing. But as you kind of um, tactfully employ it, you can help them to look at it differently, even subconsciously. So... Another idea is if you play a new play a new song at a special service, um, like for instance, if you have a night of worship on, on like a Sunday night or something like that, um, or a Friday night or whatever, it doesn't matter, um, and you just play some new songs thrown in, in in with the old songs where they won't necessarily be able to sing them, but it'll be something special to them because hey, that was we did that at that one at that one thing and it was really special and and, and as I saw it, God, I just remember those words. Um, another example is we did a Christmas presentation um, last year. And the theme was the holiday blues, you know, depression and that kind of stuff. Um, and so we did some songs that were more encouraging and uplifting. So now when we go to um, – when we now that it's in the new year, I'm going to be bringing them back. And when they hear it, they're going to, they're going to remember, hey, this is a special song to me because it helped them say um, for that Christmas service about how I don't have to be depressed anymore. You know, uh, or, you know, I don't have to give up. Or, you get what I'm saying. Um, and so if you play it at special services, it introduces them to the song, and maybe they're not expected to sing, like, for instance, in a night of worship, maybe. Um, and it just allows them the freedom to listen and soak it in. But then also, that song will forever be special to them. Um, and it'll help you to, 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 to play it again in the future. Um, another, another idea... Uh, Play it for a few weeks in a row, but during a service, doesn't matter which one, but don't play them as the first song or the last song. Always have a song that goes before it and a song that goes after it. And the reason for this is because your first song should kind of bring them in. You know, they've got a bunch of things in their mind that is the farthest thing on their mind to worship God. And so your first song is just kind of 
reeling them in, hey, we're worshiping now. And the last song tells them, hey, we're, we're going to go ahead and wind down with the worship, and we're just going to really focus on God and, 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 and pray and seek him. And so you don't want it as the last song because it will throw people off. They won't feel like, like, like praying and really seeking after God because they're trying to figure out this new song. And if you do it first, their mind is a thousand miles you know, away, so you're not really going to remember it. You want to do a familiar song first that's fast and upbeat that will roll them in. And then maybe the second or third song have the new have the new one depending on how fast it is, um, and then you know then end on a on a nice familiar song so that it'll kind of wind them down from especially if especially if it's if the new song is a slow song do it as a second to last song, and then they'll be all confused about about the new song, uh, but maybe a line or two would have stuck in their heads, maybe, and then. Uh, you can go to the last song and have the last song be familiar to them, so it kind of winds them down from the confusion. And ah, because when people feel something new, it makes them feel um, out of place and it makes them feel nervous. They don't like new things. Um, they, they like re repetition. Uh, and so if you do song like that, it kind of helps draw it in and it helps them to feel like it belongs there. Um, which is this is going to be an issue that you face any time that you introduce a, a new song that's maybe a different kind of style. For instance, if you do a lot of hymns at your church and you do a modern song, it, it once again you're going to have problems with this um, because it's not familiar. Or if you're doing modern songs and you try to do maybe a different style of modern song than you normally do, maybe more folksy, or or you get what I'm saying, people are going to be able to ooh this this is not this is not comfortable and you just kind of have to slowly introduce them to the idea of where you want to head, to head to. Maybe you want to have a, a wide diversity in, in your worship music. It's not going to be done in just like a day or two. It's going to take years of slowly planning, working it in, gradually making sure that you have the support of the pastor because you don't want to be doing stuff behind his back. That never ends well. And here's the thing. Above all these things, remember that it's not so much the new song itself as the, the, the singer of the song. And what I mean by that is, let's say you're doing a new song and you feel awkward about the new song, they're going to pick up on that and they're going to feel awkward on it. When you do a new song, make sure you have it down, nail your parts, do it perfectly, and get excited about the new song. This is something that we have decided to include in our public time of worship. This isn't me singing in my closet. This is us worshiping God. And when you do that, it kind of it kind of clues them and, hey, hey, I can be okay with this. And even if they don't necessarily get the song the first time, they get the heart of the song, the idea of the song. They get the heart of the worship leader. So remember those things. And here's just a few more things. Um, you can play it uh, every week for a couple of weeks, like maybe a month or so, uh, during uh, the weekday services where there are fewer people. Like, for instance, let's say you have a Wednesday night service, and let's say, oh, 20% of the people on Sunday mornings are on Wednesday nights. This is good. Do it then because you'll have less and so it'll be easier for they won't be tripping over themselves. It'll kind of um, go among them quicker. And then when they, when you take it into Sunday, then you'll already have you know hey one fourth to one fifth of the congregation already singing the song. And so that'll kind of take up for the lack. And the other people won't feel like this song doesn't belong. They'll feel like mm, I need to learn this song because everybody else seems to know it. It's about getting kind of a momentum going with the new song. And with that, the quicker you can build that momentum and help them to accept it as a song that they sing, the quicker that uh, that people will be able to actually worship God during those songs. Um, another idea here is you can share the new song on social media. Let's say, for instance, have a, an official official church tweeter, you know, who goes on on, on Twitter and says, "Hey, um, new so uh, we just incorporated a new song called whatever the new song is called by." whoever the artist is, or if it's a, an original song that the church members wrote themselves, um, you know, own it. If you're going to in incorporate songs that you've that you've written, make sure it fits the, the idea of the church and where the church is going, and own the song. Make it where it, it belongs. This isn't an outside song. This isn't a lesser song as the songs on radio. This is a song that is about our identity as a church, and it, it's it's... It takes us where our pastor is already taking us. You know, have things work together. Don't have them be um, don't have them be uh, antagonistic towards each other. Each other. Let's say, for instance, your pastor is not real into the whole doom and gloom preaching and you know 
Jesus. Well, then you really don't want to be having a lot of songs that are, you know, we're all going to be judged and you're going to hell. You know, you, you want songs that are going to be along with there. And if you're if you're doing your own songs that you've written, make sure that they, they sound professional. You want to make sure that the poetry flows, that the idea is finished, not just songs that's, that kind of sound good but are kind of hollow. Make sure that you actually sing something that's worth singing. At the end of the day, if they were to remember that one song, would they walk around saying, walk away saying, yes, this accurately portrays God's glory, what Christ did on the cross? You know, is this is this a song that's going to do that? And so make sure when you're introducing a new song that's actually a song that is worth introducing. That's important to remember. And the last point that I want to mention, have the screen show the name of the song when it starts. Just on the bottom of the screen, just real quick. It doesn't have to be up there forever. Um... New Hallelujah, Michael W. Smith. See what I mean? Just something where it kind of, oh, okay. And then it's the way of the world now. You know, they, they'll be up there and getting on their phones, which back backtracking to that second to last point there, share the new song on social media. If you have a, a church Facebook, um, maybe uh, just include a video of it there. And, you know, and maybe ask people, hey, what do you think about this new song? Or if you're not really interested in getting their opinion, you just want them to accept the new song, then don't ask um, how they like to just say, um, this was, the, this was uh, the new song that we did uh, this Sunday morning. Um, maybe hope you enjoy or, or, or um, we'll be singing it again. Or, or just you want to do something that sounds tactful and where they can – if you don't lead – People will just kind of come up with their own conclusions on stuff. So when you're when you're trying to lead the congregation into a new song, make sure that they know what direction you're leading them in. Hey, this is the song that we're doing now, and um, this is the idea of the song. Maybe even incorporate some kind of um, uh, explanation of the song on social media. Hey, we started doing this new song. This is what the song is about. This is the idea of the song. This is the verse that the song is based off of. This is the idea. This is what it means. Make it where they can embrace the new song. Make it where they can own the song, where they can they can feel like it belongs. And that's really all I got for now. Um, like I said, if you've got any ideas about how to introduce new songs, please post them in the comments below so other people can learn from the two. And thank you for watching.